Hello, everyone. My name is Connor Spell Hater, and today we are back with another EDH guide going over uh, the origins of Kemi God Neon Dynasty Commander. Uh, today we're looking at the green one, Mojin of Towering Might. So, this is the green version of the Mojins. So, take a moment to read it. Obviously, you know the deal. We have to cast this from our hands. So we've got stuff in this deck to return. Uh, it backed our hand, and then once we can start getting this off, you know, getting multiple count indestructible counters on it, uh, then we can really start going off. So I'll be reviewing the uh, stuff that synergizes with this, of course. Why wouldn't I? So let's get into it. Straight away with Rishar, Pima Renegade. Uh, due to our commander being able to distribute uh, a lot of counters onto our creatures. This means we could suddenly find ourselves with a lot of green mana available if we tap those creatures if they have counters. Gone with the West Tree because our modified creatures will, well, our creatures are going to be modified due to the counters. So therefore, they will have trample and they'll allow us to ramp even more. Next, we have Roaring Primadox to return, to always return our commander to our hand. The erratic portal to do the same thing, just not on our upkeep. Cloudstone Curio, uh, you know, since it's a, melee, it's a May ability, of course, we're going to be using this a good amount. Dragon Mass, pump up our commander as it's out, you know, get it, use out of it while it's still on the battlefield. Probably should put this in my other uh, three decks that I've already done, but past this. The past is the past, so you could use this probably, you know, turn my turn the commander in this deck into a 10 10 and then swing, get the trample. Uh, ancestral statue to return our commander to our hand, Selvager of Rune, so that we when our commander dies, we can send it to the graveyard and then use Selvager of Rune to get it back on that turn, of course. Blood clock, this is interesting because this could end up. Letting helping us win the game due to it uh, possibly forcing people to pay life to keep stuff around and not have to return anything. But if they do, it's probably going to help them out more than anything due to all the ETB effects that are running around here lately. But it's more for us. Uh, by direction, Swarm Lord, due to us having, due to us being able to put a great amount of counters on a creature. A creature like this with in effect is really useful in this deck because this one especially can make a bunch of insects in a hurry not to mention those insects have infect and this too has infect and if a, and as you all know players to no more poison counters they instantly lose the game unless they have the annoying plant name or something whatever you have Nonetheless, this is a card that could potentially win the game within turns. The Tangent Engine does the same thing, could wipe your opponent's board out, Lithio Formation, to copy up the triggers and potentially some other stuff. Illusionist Bracers to do the same thing. Rings of Bright Earth, you know the deal. Hanger Back Walker, due to this, creating a number of 1 1 flyers equals the number of Multiple counters on this thing when it dies. Uh, this, we're really able to utilize this this thing in our deck because uh, we just remove the indestructible counter from our commander and put all like eight of those counters on Hangerback Walker, and suddenly that's eight more one ones in the air. Sign of Draco to give all of our green creatures trample and to be something big. I'm trying somewhat big. Uh, ambush boutique uh, to return a creature to our hand and to, to be something with trample. So suddenly 14, 14 with trample coming out, or coming out of our opponent. Invasive species for an easy return to our hand, very cheap. Swarm shambler to kind of keep our stuff safe a bit in a way because it gives that trade off of if our opponent does something to our creatures. And then we get start getting one ones, but if they do, they do, and it's probably uh, benefits the 
them more than us, but still it's something. Colonian Hydra, this could just, this is just like Game Ender, you see this normally in my green decks. I could do a top 10 uh, recommended cards for like Commander, if that's what you guys want for your 20 sub special coming from yours truly. Uh, so let me know that in the comments. And while you're there, if you're the first one, then you can decide the commander of the next video. Anyways, moving on. Goreclaw, Terror of Pulsus Mode, because most of these creatures in this deck you're going to be seeing, well, in this guide, I should say, you don't have to follow the guide like, like I've been kind of neglecting to say. Uh, well, ever so now, and I'll say it again. Uh, you don't have to follow this exact guide. You can go with some of the cards, all the cards, none of the cards. It's just pointing you into a direction, honestly. Uh, but anyways, as I was saying, Goreclaw, Terror of Pulse, Sisma is just a cheapen up uh, your creature spells, since most of them in this deck are going to have power for or greater. And, you know, uh, to pop up our big guys, Marwin the Nurturer, to take advantage of the counters that may be put onto said creatures. We can just focus all of them onto her, and suddenly we have a creature that can add nine or more mana. Bramblewood Paragon uh, gives all our creatures with plus or plus of counters on them trample. And in case you didn't, and of course, there's that first line of text up there, but that's not important. Really, Pelt Collector for when our big stuff dies into being a nice creature. John, no language. Stonehoof, Chieftain, uh, just to make it safe for our creatures to attack and to make them even more difficult to block. Ain't no chump block going to be helping you out in this case. Voren collects Monstrous Raider to half the number of counters our opponents get to put on things and to double the number of counters we do. So, pretty nice. Hydra Omnivore, in case we're in more than a 1v1 and, and set a free-for-all in a uh, four-way four or like three-way or whatever, Hydra Omnivore is here to deal damage to multiple opponents, give this thing lifelink, and suddenly you're looking at yourself having a lot of life and your opponents low, low on life, if not dead within an a few turns. Primordial Hydra to be big and scary and to be an X spell in the deck because we're green. We ramp a whole bunch because Wizards does not know how to balance, apparently. Well, they do it with bands, but still, green is probably the most one of the most overpowered colors there is. I mean, it literally takes Grixis to stop it. Uh, Pathbreaker Ibex. Uh, you know, because we'll probably have a big creature, and as a result, we'll be able to uh, most likely kill our opponents. So we just stack a whole. So plan with with this would be just you know have a creature stacked with all those counters that are given by the margin of towering might, and then play this, and then the next turn we are able to swing. We do with just about everything. And then all of our creatures get buffed up nice and big. Carnage Tyrant is in here just because it's a great card in this deck. It's a great card in green in general. Uh, first of all, can't be countered. I mean, name of the channel, man. Trample and Hexproof. That is a nightmarish combination. Combine Indestructible with this and Lifelink and Double Strike or some other things. Whatever. Or like even Haste. And suddenly, this thing is really scary. Just as red, just as red green, red green players back when Ixalan was a thing. The Thras Thrasta Tempest Roar. Uh, since we're in green and we're casting a lot of stuff, or not all that much stuff, in this case, because our our mana curve is rather high. This is a nice cheap but big creature that has trample and haste, but also tramples over planeswalkers. Meaning that if we do excess damage to a planeswalker, uh, well, if we do damage to a planeswalker and kill it, and there's excess damage left over, 
that excess damage goes straight to our opponent's face. And as and it this creature also has hex proof as long as it's entering the battlefield this turn, meaning that when this thing comes in, if it's uncountered, uh, which can't be guaranteed on like Carnage turn, uh, if this thing is uncountered, it's gonna be pretty hard to get rid of, unless you have Death Touch or something. Steely Champion, great turn three play. I mean, three mana for a 5-4 that can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. You give this thing those eight counters, and suddenly this thing is pretty hard to block because chump blockers aren't an answer, mostly. Because most chump blockers are creatures with power two or less, unless you're a wall. Galta Primal Hunger. Again, nice, cheap creature. This one can actually get... This one actually stays cheap throughout the, as the game progresses. And probably easier to cast. Uh, Trample 12-12, nothing else to say. You get this the thing, the eight counters, suddenly you've got 20-20. They can that, you know, say there's just a white player at the table. Well, you know what this is going to do to them. Half their life total. Essentially. I mean, what else? Gigantosaurus because five mana ten ten. That's fair, wizards. That's absolutely fair. Scurry Oak to make us a uh, to make us an army of squirrels in a hurry. Well, not in a hurry, I should say. Solidar solidarity of heroes to double the number of counters that we put on our creatures, so it probably helps. So this uh benefits us if we spread those counters around invigorating search to do the same thing but to a lesser scale because this thing has strive and makes it more expensive for each target for each thing we target beyond the first make sense makes sense nissy and horn beetle because we're definitely going to have something with Powerful or greater on our board. Archive troll, something to save it. Something, it's something that can save itself. So it's a pretty good creature. Uh, whoops. Iridescent Hornbeal to really make us an army in a hurry. Go watch some of my MTG Arena content. content. You'll find out just how good the, this thing can be. I mean, just a singular activation of Morgen of Towering Might alone. By the end of the turn, we get us at least eight one ones, if not more, because we're most likely we're going to be putting more than eight plus one plus of counters on creatures we on creatures we control. Well, among creatures we control, because we're green. Um, Derek Primal Hunter to make us some three threes draws a whole bunch of cards more than anything, and if we get to it. Make us a good amount of six six creatures. Giant Adiphage. This is a great creature in this deck because if we put all the counters that Morgen of Tower Mike can give onto this, then we have a 15 15 trampling creature that clones itself. And, and, on, and the thing with Creatures with trample, the higher the power, the harder it is to prevent all that damage from coming through. And a 1515 is a rather big creature. So unless your opponent has a big board state full of one ones, in which case they're playing white, that thing's most likely getting through. And then from there, it's just half. Primeval Titan to ramp us up and to be in yet another creature with Trample. Primeval Bounty to make us some 3 threes, bump up our creatures even more than we already are because we're green. Nothing is ever too big. Uh, and to gain us some life. Fido Titan to be a, just an unkillable, annoying creature. Hope you like that, blue black players. Timmy Power Gamer to make cash to make uh to uh, just to allow us to cheat creatures into play. I mean, for for generic mana, you put something like Galta or like 
giant ad phase or tight or titan you know like this is a broken card honestly it probably would be one of the best commanders sort of feast and famine y'all know the deal sword of truth and justice all i have to do is read to find out what it's all about hooded hydra this will just create you an army since you can add counters to it eight to be specific and this is another x spell so if you have a lot of mana lying around there's something to use it for Carnes bastion proliferate command beacon you know the deal same with sanctum and then we have 47 47 force basic force i shall add and with that the end of this commander guide starring origin of towering might i hope you enjoyed this guide uh if you did please subscribe we are at 19 subscribers one away from 20 then we can do the 20 so special in which case i may do that top 10 i mentioned earlier if you guys want that and if you do please comment down below uh and as you're commenting if you're the first one you can suggest a commander and i will hold my end of the bargain and do as you requested and dedicate an episode to said command with that said please of course like and subscribe as i said uh 20 sub special it's just within a subscriber's reach literally just one um excuse me, comment, be the first one, hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss more of this content, go watch my other videos, like them, comment on them, I like feedback, uh, oh, and share this video along with other videos on my channel with other people you may or may not know of, anyways, that's gonna be it, and I will see you guys next time, Bye bye